Let's look at the arrows in a category. The question we have is, are there abstract arrow theoretic properties which generalize the concepts of injection and surjection of set maps? So we're not going to look at uh, any element or uh, anything that is not related to the arrow structure of a category. So let's start with the definition. Let E be a category and F, X to Y be an E arrow. Then F is mono, provided that for each object Z in E and for each uh, pair of arrows G and H from Z to X, such that we have FG is equal to FH, then G is equal to H. This just means that uh, an arrow is mono if and only if it is left cancelable. The arrow F is split mono, provided there exists an E arrow G, Y to X, such that GF is equal to the identity. Um, and sometimes this is called a section. Uh, we say that F is effective mono, provided that the pushout of F and F, sometimes this is called the co-kernel pair, exists. And uh, moreover, that F is going to be the equalizer of the pushout of F and F. So it equalizes its co-kernel. We say that F is regular mono, provided F is an equalizer for some pair of E arrows. We say that F is strict mono, provided that F is the limit of a certain diagram, where this, this diagram is over a category I, and this category has, um, so for each object Z and E and each pair of arrows G and H from Y to Z, such that GF is equal to HF, we have this object in I, I, lower script G, H, Z, and arrows G and H from the object I, identity Y, identity Y, Y, to I, lower script G, H, Z, um, and D is this functor which associates this object I, G, H, Z to Z, and it associates those arrows just to themselves. So G goes to G and H goes to H. So we can think of um, F as being a limit of this multiple, it's like a multiple equalizer. We say that F is a strong mono, provided F is mono, and for each E F E E, we have that E is orthogonal to F. Um, and we suggest you look at the concept of orthogonality in NLAB, or um, I'm, I'm going to eventually make a video about this in, when, we, when I talk about factorizations. And finally, we have that F is extremal mono, provided that F is mono, and for each factorization, F equal to G E with E epi implies that E is ISO. Then we have the dual statements, um, where you just flip all the arrows around, and we get uh, epi, split epi, effective epi, regular epi, strong epi, and extremal epi. If an E arrow is both mono and epi, we call it a bi, although some people suggest that we call it something else or just always say that it's both mono and epi because there's another um, there's a there's another term called bimorphism which has to do with higher category theory um, but we're going to call it bi and then we say a category in which each bi arrow is iso is called balanced um, we denote the subclasses of arrows defined above by mono split mono effective mono regular mono strict mono strong mono and extremal mono, respectively. And we have the same type of uh, notation for the epi variations. We give another definition. This is, uh, so we have a category E, and it is said to satisfy the axiom of choice provided every epi splits. So epi is equal to split epi in the category. Dually, we say E satisfies the co-axiom of choice provided every mono splits. And this is actually a generalization, at least for the axiom of choice, it's, it's a generalization of um, the axiom of choice in set. So if, you, if we, we show that set, if you have this model of set, it satisfies the axiom of choice um, if and only if it satisfies the axiom of choice classically, what, what we mean by axiom of choice classically. They're equivalent notions. Let's now look at the relations between all of these different variants. So we have the following proposition. Um, so we have these relations, 1 to 9, and we have the dual relations, which we denote by 1 upper script 
uh, degree or zero um, to, to nine zero between classes of arrows in any category. The reverse implications uh, hold when the category satisfies the stated conditions. Um, so let's look at the diagram a little bit more closely. Uh, we'll just restrict ourselves to the left-hand side because the right-hand side, the, the proof is the dual proof. And so we're just going to look at the left-hand side. So we have number one says that every ISO is a split mono. Uh, number two says every split mono is effective mono is an effective mono. Three states that an effective mono is regular. And four states that a regular mono is strict. And five states that a strict mono is strong. And six implies that strong is extremal. And seven implies that extremal mono is mono. Um, eight implies that a bi is mono. And nine says that every iso is mono. And then we have these arrows coming back, kind of flowing in the opposite direction, going uphill, where um, so we have that a mono is an extremal mono if the category is balanced. If the category has pushouts, then we have extremal monos are the same as strong monos. If the category has factorizations for each arrow, um, or unique factorizations, where you have the, an, an epi followed by a regular mono, then every extremal mono is going to be regular. And if we have co-kernel pairs, or pushouts of um, the same arrow, then every strict mono is going to be effective. So let's prove this. The proof is very, uh, each piece is very simple, but it, it shows the interrelation, and I think it's good to go through it. So let's start with the first one. So let's let G be an isomorphism. Then there exists an F such that FG is equal to the identity and GF is equal to the identity. Then in particular, FG is the identity. And since the identity is mono, we have that G must be a split mono. Number two says that uh, if we have a split mono S with RS equal to the identity, so it has, um, so R is going to be its left inverse, we claim that the identity and SR is equal to the pushout of S and S, or it's the identity and SR is the co-kernel pair of S. So indeed, if HS is equal to MS, as in the diagram, so we have this outside uh, commuting condition, then we have that H must be its unique factorization. Um, we see that the upper triangle it must be H, so we have to just so that show that the lower triangle uh, must also uh, be commutative. And we see that it is, since if MS is equal to HS, then by precomposing by R, we have M is equal to HSR, uh, and that is what we want to show. Um, then it's easy to see that the equalizer of SR and the identity is S, thus it is effective. Third. Since an effective mono is an equalizer of its co-kernel pair, then it's regular. Four, let M be a regular mono with M equal to the equalizer of FG. Then M is equal to the limit over, over I, so the limit of D, um, where D is the diagram of all those pairs such that HM is equal to KM. Since any other M prime, which, we, which has HM prime equal to KM prime, for all those HK implies that in particular, FM prime is equal to GM prime, and thus factorizes uniquely through M by the universal mapping proper, property of the, co of the equalizer. Five, let M be a strict mono, and VE equal to MU be a lifting problem with E epi. Um, so you, can, you might want to draw this diagram out if it makes it easier to understand. Then for each GH, such that GM is equal to HM, we have GVE is equal to GMU, which is equal to HMU, which is equal to HVE. Then GV is equal to HV, since E is epi. And again, by the universal mapping property of a strict mono, there is a unique W such that MW is equal to V, and WE is equal to U. Again, maybe you want to draw this out to make it clear to you.
Number six, let m be a strong mono. Then for the factorization, m equal to m prime e with e epi, there is a unique w such that mw is equal to m prime and the identity is equal to we. Since the identity is mono, so is e. Then since e is split epi and m mono, um, e is iso. Hence, m is an extremal mono. Number seven, it's just by definition that we have the extremal mono is a mono. Number eight is also by definition, uh, by is mono and epi, so it's mono. And nine, let g be iso, then fg is equal to the identity, implying that g is mono. Similarly, gf is equal to the identity, and thus g is epi, and thus it is by. Now let's let's show that um, these upward arrows also um, are satisfied when those when the category has these certain properties. So first let's let E be balanced. Then we have that mono is equal to extreme mo extremal monos, um, and this is clear since if M is mono and the factorization of it is uh, M equal to Fe for an Fe E. Then since M is mono, E is also mono, and thus, since it is balanced, it must be iso. Hence, uh, mono is an extremal mono in a balanced category. Next, we show that if E has pushouts, then the extremal monos are the same as the strong monos. Uh, let M be an extremal mono, and suppose that VE is equal to MU for an FEU, and FEE, and some arrows U and V. Then we form the pushout of E and U, since it has pushouts. Since E is epi and epis are stable under pushout, epis are a particular kind of co-limit, you can verify it by uh, taking pushouts, um, then we see that E bar in the diagram is epi. And by the universal mapping property of, of the pushout, there exists this unique H such that the following commutes. Um, then in particular, M is equal to HE, then since M is extremal, E must be ISO, thus setting W equal to E bar inverse recomposed by U bar, we see that U is equal to WE and V is equal to MW, thus M is a strong mono. Now if we have extremal monos, um, oh sorry, if we have that E is a epi regular mono category, which means that has this factorization um, system of epis followed by regular monos for each arrow, um, then we're going to show that the extremal monos are the same as the regular monos. Then, so let's suppose that M is an extremal mono. Then M factorizes as M equal to M prime E, where E is epi and M prime is a regular mono. Since M is extremal, E is iso. Let M prime be the equalizer of F and G. Since E is iso, we have M prime E shares the universal, same universal pro mapping property. Um, it shares the same universal mapping property. And so we may say that M is equal to M prime E, which is the equalizer of F and G. Therefore, M is a regular mono. Finally, we show that the strict monos are the same as the effective monos if and only if the category has co-kernel pairs, i.e. for each arrow G, the pushout of G and G exists. Suppose that F is a strict mono. We must show that the first, uh, that we must show the first equality in equalizer. So we're gonna take the equalizer of the pushout of F and F is equal to the limit of this diagram um, which is equal to F, where D is the diagram consisting of all the GH such, such that GF is equal to HF. By the universal mapping property of the pushout, we see that each G and H such that GF equals HF uniquely factorizes through the pushout projections, P and Q respectively. Um, therefore, the equalizer, P and Q, must also be the limit of D, and that's shown by, by this diagram above. Thus, F is an effective mono. And that's the end of the proof.